I grew up with a single mom, uh, lived in nothing but abuse, what I remember from my father. My grandmother had to help my mom raise us. We were made to go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, vacation Bible school revival. Everything done with church, we were there. So I knew God all of my life, and I've always had God in my heart. Well, I was in a marriage, and my husband wasn't a believer. So he would tell me, if I wanted to pray at the table to eat, over the food, don't bring that home, shove it down my throat. Um, I don't want to hear about it. I'd invite him to church. Um, I'll go when it's my time. I'm not ready. So I continued to stay there. Um, a friend asked me to go out one night. So I said, why not have a girls' night out? I went out. Well, at the time, I wasn't into the Lord. I would try to go to church, but I didn't feel what I felt before because I knew that I had walked away from Him. He didn't walk away from me. I've done a lot of things that right now I'm not proud of. I can say I never did drugs, but I did drink. Some nights I don't remember getting home. Also, there was times I did commit adultery. I'm not happy about that, but I was looking for somebody to love me. I knew I shouldn't have stayed with God because His love was the only love I needed. I took my daughter to his arms, and on the way back, we had a bad wreck. I was upside down in the car, in the truck, and there was gas everywhere. And as we was rolling, I heard my grandson screaming, and he kept saying, I want out, I want out. And I was like, God have mercy on me, because my heart wasn't right. And I knew that I was probably gonna go to hell. And it was a wake up call, really. When God woke me up, I knew he had a plan for me. He had to have a plan. And I knew that I told him then, I know where I'm going. But I searched every church and couldn't find one. I mean, and there was churches that I said a year in and I was like, this is not it. This is not it. So I said, I'm going to try this church. I kept riding by here. I came to the Ember. I came for maybe six or seven months and I had to have knee surgery and knee replacement. And while I was home having knee surgery, dealing with excruciating pain, I called Kevin up. I said, I need prayer. And he said, can I have some of my people come out and pray with you? And they prayed for me. And I got up and walked. And I was supposed to be down for four weeks. I was back in church in the second week. And I knew the Lord loved me and I loved the Lord, but I never fell in love with the Lord like I'm in love with Him now. This is an amazing love. Through this and through being in a wreck that woke me up, knowing that God had a plan for me, I followed His will. And that's when I started the downtown Light It Up Blue, which is a nonprofit organization. I kept asking God, do you really think I can do this? Do you really think I can do this? And he kept saying, one person can move a mountain. And believe me, I moved the mountain. We lit the downtown blue up for autism. I have a grandson that's autistic. A couple years ago, an aggressive autistic child was shot and killed by police. I didn't want that to happen to my grandson. And my awareness was to bring special needs kids to know the police, the firemen, the EMS, to know what the uniforms meant and the lights meant. I didn't want them to be scared of them. Um, I sell lights and I sell t-shirts. Um, a dollar is made off of a light and two dollars is made off of a t-shirt. And if people want to donate, they donate. But mostly what I ask is to donate your time and to let these kids know that they are cared for and that their life matters. Light it up blue for autism, and it will be April the 2nd from 5 o'clock to 9, and everybody's invited. 
we were like downtown up. If I have to put a light in there myself, I'm gonna like try to light every building up.